guys, welcome back to my channel. I know I didn't upload anything last week and I have a pretty good reason for that. It's because we've been super packed with our Merdeka sale. If you're not from Malaysia, Merdeka means independence and on the 31st of August, we will be celebrating our 64th year of independence and it's our brand's tradition to have a Merdeka sale in the last week of August every year. So yeah, if you're new here and you're interested to try any of our products, now might be the best time for you to do that since everything is at 31% off now until the 31st of August. So hurry up! Website link is in the description box below and yes, we do ship worldwide. Without further ado, let's get to today's video. So a couple of weeks ago, I got this wonderful DM from a regular customer and she requested that I make a video to show how I make our lip polish. Thank you for that lovely DM and really made my day! So today's video won't be a DIY video because it's gonna be one of my how I make our products series and I'll be showing you how I make our best-selling lychee geranium lip polish. If you've seen our previous video on how I make our lychee geranium lip balm, I did mention at the end of the video that I will show you how I make the lip polish version of it. So here it is! As always, the first step is to sterilize everything. I use the 70% rubbing alcohol. You can get this literally everywhere nowadays since the pandemic. <laughs> you want to spray everything that's going to touch your products, including the surfaces. And then grab a clean microfiber cloth or a disposable paper towel to wipe off the excess water. So a lip polish is basically a lip scrub that is much finer in texture and is softer and more gentle to the skin. Our lip polish consists of two parts. The first one is the cream base and the second one is a scrub base. So now we're gonna start with making the cream base first. The first ingredient we'll be using here is glycerin. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this will be the water phase of the cream base. If you're a little confused about this, you can watch my DIY green tea body lotion and you'll understand the concept better. So glycerin is an important ingredient because it is the humectant and what it does is that it attracts moisture from the environment and bring it to your skin to hydrate your cells. The next ingredient is distilled water. Always use distilled water when making skincare, especially when you're gonna sell it. Never use boiled mineral water or boiled tap water because even though it doesn't have bacteria in it, it still has minerals and minerals might react with the ingredients and disrupt the whole formulation. That is it for the water phase. And next we're gonna proceed with the oil phase. The first oil phase ingredient I'm using here is sunflower oil. Sunflower oil is a beautiful lightweight oil that is rich in vitamin E. Next, we have argan oil. I'm pretty sure everybody knows why argan oil is so famous. It's a luxury oil. It's also lightweight and it has a very high content of vitamin E and is very healing to the skin and it brightens the skin as well. To that, we're gonna add some beeswax. Beeswax is the ingredient that's gonna give a little barrier and protection to the skin. Beeswax is so good for the lips as it retains moisture and heals chapped lips. Now I want you to take note on this. There is such thing as beeswax for crafting and beeswax for cosmetics. Be sure to only use the one that is made for cosmetics because it's much pure and it is free from harmful trace minerals. Beeswax meant for crafting is usually harder and darker in color and when you melt it down it has a weird smell. I'm not sure how to explain it but it smells sort of like a little bitter and not as odorless as a cosmetics great beeswax should. And for this lip polish cream base, I also add some shea butter because I like how creamy it makes the product feel. Not to mention all the healing benefits the shea butter offers. Alright, now it's time for the emulsifier. This is the ingredient that's going to bind the oil and water together to make the cream. In this formulation, I'm using a different kind of emulsifier. It's not emulsifying wax, but instead, it's Olivum 1000. Olivum 1000 is another type of emulsifier, but this one is derived from olives. It has the exact same function as an emulsifying wax, but of course the usage rate is a little different and the feel of the finished product is also a little bit different. I noticed that Olivum 1000 gives a more silky finish to the cream compared to emulsifying wax. And last but not least, the steric acid. Steric acid is a hardening agent that's gonna keep your cream nice and stable. I find that this ingredient helps a lot when making a cream-based lotion, especially in hot countries like Malaysia, because the temperature changes can really affect all sorts of cream-based products. 
Now we're gonna double boil the two phases together in a water bath and we're gonna put it on heat until both of them reaches 70 degrees Celsius. So it's been a couple of minutes and they both have reached the temperature that I was looking for which was 70 degrees Celsius. And now it's time to combine it. Carefully pour the water phase into the oil phase and watch the magic happen. So you want to give this a good stir, use a hand whisk or a stick blender, whichever suits you best, and then set it aside to cool. Just remember to stir it every now and then so that it doesn't separate. So while waiting for it to cool, we can start measuring our scrub base. Again, make sure to sterilize all of the equipment, all of them, that's going to touch your product. Our lip polish is sugar based, which means the scrub base consists of sugars. I use two types of sugars and the first one is castor sugar. And you really want to break up the lumps because you want your lip polish to be as smooth as possible. Oops! Don't forget to check on your cream base and give it another stir. Now I add the second sugar which is the powdered sugar, or over here we call it icing sugar. <laughs> I love how powdered sugar gives a smooth and thick texture for the scrub. It makes all the difference. And then just give that a little mix and make sure there are no lumps again. Now it's time to double check our cream base and make sure it's nice and cool to room temperature because we're gonna need to add the cool down phase in it now. Yeah, that looks about right. See how the cream looks a little different than the body lotion that I made before? Part of it is because of Olive M1000. Temperature is about 38 degrees which means it's time for the cool down phase ingredients. The first one is of course the preservative, I'm using Liquid Dermal Plus. It's a broad spectrum preservative, it's easy to handle, it's also very easy to obtain. But if you don't have Liquid Dermal Plus, feel free to use any other kind of preservative that is easier for you. Just make sure to read the usage rates and allowable temperatures and the pH level that is suitable for the preservative that you're using. And then I add the essential oils. In this product, I'm using geranium and lychee essential oils to make up that iconic lychee geranium scent in our lip care line. Now all we have to do is give it a really good stir and make sure everything is dispersed as even as possible. I mean, you can use a stick blender at this point, but I'm making such a small batch that I don't think I can stick blend this. Now's the fun part! We're gonna combine the cream base and the scrub base together. Be sure to get every last drop of the cream into the scrub base and use your elbow grease to fold them in until everything is nice and smooth and creamy. When you're done folding, it will look like cake icing. By the way, you can actually tint this with any color you like, probably something to match your lip product flavors. But I just want to keep everything natural so I'm not going to add any colorants. I'm going to let it stay white. Oh yeah, I also add a little bit more of glycerin after folding everything together because the glycerin helps keep it moist for a while because this product does tend to dry up pretty quickly once opened. Okay, this is the part that I really don't like about making this product, unfortunately. It is filling the jars with it. It's so small and you have to fill such a small amount, so we usually have to use a piping bag for this, like I'm doing right now. So just nip off the top like that and weigh the jar and pipe the product in. Yeah, the hole was a little too small, which is why it came out so slow, and I had to use a lot of pressure. I usually don't do this myself. This is Ryan's job, but I'm doing it for you guys. Help! Help! 
At this point, I sort of lost my patience and I gave up and I called Ryan to help. So yay, Ryan to the rescue! I mean, for real guys, it's all fun and games until you have to pipe it in and measure everything to make sure it's precise. This part is so tedious and time consuming. You can see my little hands at the back, just double checking the weights and adjusting them while Ryan does the hard work. <laughs> Phew! We finally got that done and now it's time to cap them off and label them. This jar is so cute you guys. It comes with a stopper so it keeps the product fresh and moist longer. And look at the cap itself, it looks like a mushroom. <laughs> and it has a reflective silver coating so yeah you can see all the reflections of my production room right now with a big ass fan on top there. <laughs> Now for the second tedious job of the packaging part. You need to manually cap everything off by hand. I guess I feel like it's so tedious because it's so small. It feels like you have to handle a lot of products at once just because it's small. I mean I don't mind doing this for the body scrubs or the face scrubs or the face masks because they're big. I don't know if it makes sense to you but that's just how I feel. Now it's time to label them! This is the third tedious part of making this product. So we're gonna use two types of labels. The first one is the circular one. We just put it at the bottom of the jar. It's very simple. It has the name of the product with the usage direction and our website. And then we go ahead and put this transparent sticker that has just the name of the lip polish on it. I feel like it gives the product a more elegant feel. Also so that the jar doesn't look too plain. And yeah, I had to take off my glove for this because the transparent sticker sticks to the gloves and it won't stick to the jar. It just makes everything so messy. Don't worry, I've already sanitized my hands before doing this. And it's not touching the product itself anyways, it's just the labels. Cute, right? But no, we're not done yet. Now for the final most tedious part of making this lip polish. Attaching the sleeve! So I ordered these art card rectangles because it actually saves a lot of cost than making a customized boxes. But bear with me, it is pretty time consuming. The first part is to fold the corners. Once it's folded, it wraps around the jar pretty easily and then I secured it with a double-sided tape. I'm just gonna leave this here so you get to enjoy the process without my annoying voice narrating the whole story for you. <laughs> Ta-da! So this is what my finished lip polish looks like. So I have the name of the lip polish on top with the weight of the product which is 12 grams per jar. And on the side we have the ingredients in INCI format and on the other side is our company details. What do you think? It's pretty cute, huh? Kinda worth all that time and effort and patience. So there you have it. This is how I make our best-selling flavor of lip polish, the lychee geranium lip polish. And I know a lot of you will ask me to provide the full measurements of the ingredients, but I am so so sorry I will not disclose any of the measurements of the ingredients for the products that I make for selling purposes. Because, come on guys, it's business. It's a trade secret. You're not supposed to share everything about your business online. I mean, I mean we can if we want to, but it's not compulsory. What I'm trying to share here is actually the technique on how I make it. And it's fine if you guys want to try it too, but you're gonna need to experiment and explore on the ratios and concentrations and make it your own unique product. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Anyways, thank you for watching and let me know what else you want to see me make. And if you love this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with your buddies. See you in my next video.